Hi, I'm Ida Alavune, and this is Celestial You. Welcome to Celestial You. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I am going to be talking about this super long Mars transit in the sign of Gemini. Now this started in August of this year, um, August 20th within the United States, and it is going to persist through the, through the last week of March. So it's really important right now to understand how this energy is going to affect you because man, it is going to persist. If you think that now in September, you've experienced some energies that maybe were challenging for you, I have news for you. This is going to repeat itself. So do not avoid these energies, um, but instead you can listen to, you know, I'm gonna break it down by uh, your rising sign so you can know exactly how this is gonna affect you um, over the next six or so months. <laughs> so it's a big deal. <laughs> I've already started feeling it myself and I'm going to try to describe to you uh, what that energy feels like so you can kind of like put your finger on it. But a lot of you have noticed changes that occurred in the end of August um, and it's really important to kind of think about how this might uh, affect you and what you can do in the meantime to be more productive. Okay. Let's get started. So first I want to go over just what is Gemini and um, possible manifestations of Mars and Gemini in general. Okay, so Gemini is a mutable sign, and that just means that it's okay with starting new things, and it's okay with sort of ending things, and sometimes it's just more flexible, it can go either way. So sometimes that does feel like you are indecisive and not really making decisions. And the reason why you might feel like you're not making decisions is because the emphasis of Gemini is that we are looking at information to inform our path. Okay, so we want to pursue the truth. Okay, so we're getting down to brass tacks here with the truth and what the truth means to us. And so by collecting information about the different decisions you might be making over these next uh, six months or so, you are really putting together um, changes that you will make in your life that support your particular understanding or truth. Um, and so what Gemini does help us do is it helps us to be more detached. It's a very logical sign. It's um, really filtering through information without being judgmental. And so that's, that's a really good um, aspect of Gemini. And it's really looking at what are the ways in which um, we can detach from outcomes and just weigh and measure um, all of the inputs um, in decision-making pieces of information, assimilating new pieces of information, gaining new skills, because Gemini is involved in um, gaining new skills, um, which will inform our path. And it's really not the sign of engaging in relationships. Now that's gonna be different depending on your personal rising signs will go over that. Some of these cases do incorporate relationships, but generally speaking, Gemini is agnostic of relationships. That's why they can be so free and so tend to um, not be hampered by relationships because really they're more interested in thinking. Um, Gemini is ruled by Mercury and Mercury is the thinking planet, thinking and communicating um, rather than um, necessarily 
uh, weighing what the partnerships or the relationships are dealing with. So it's a it's nice it's a nice time to be detached from those. Um, and even if you are dealing with relationships, it kind of gives you this nice less judgmental way of backing things up and really looking at the facts and figuring out what your truth is. So those are really good things. Now when we add Mars, okay, so Mars is the planet of really wanting to initiate things. Um, and it's a planet where we're really trying to go after what we want. And so, um, the the energy of Mars in Gemini, it's interesting. It feels like we want these things, but we're not exactly ready to make decisions on them. We're still gaining skills. We're gathering information. And really, Mars is a very logical planet as well. So there's this sense of not being emotional. It's a sense of being more logical as you go through. Um, and so in Vedic astrology, Mars is actually known as the Brahmacharya planet. So Mars does not have its own consort. And in Western astrology, they think of Mars as being the passion. So that can, and really, um, desire. And it is the planet of desire, but unfortunately, it's the desire to have what you want. It's not necessarily the desire to bring in a partner. Um, so a lot of this is uh, Mars really wanting to connect to what's most true to them and not necessarily through others. So really, it's an inner focus on your own skills and truth. Um, and if you do end up bringing this to a relationship, because that's um, the house placements you have, um, it's going to be a, a lot more removed and it's going to be a case in which um, you might desire someone, but you are not necessarily wanting to uh, fully engage with them until you've figured out your own mind. Um, sort of speak. And that's the feeling of Mars and Gemini. Another thing is Mars and Gemini can be quite nerve wracking because Mars wants to do things. And again, Gemini wants to analyze things. And so it's like, should I do this or should I keep studying this? Should I like move forward on this thing or should I do this other thing? And so there's like this, this kind of, um, idea that you don't want to be hampered by decisions at the moment. And so is it like big decisions, depending on where you are at in your house placements, which I'll go over, you may need to delay decisions until you have made up your mind and collected all of your information and figured out what's true and true to you and your sovereign um, ideas, because Mars is only concerned with self and self-assertion. So you can see here that it's not lending itself to creating partnerships most of the time. Um, although it does re also represent passion. Um, and so there might be a great passion for partnership, but there may not be a great means for partnership. So that's another thing about Mars. Um, the other thing is Mars can cause disagreements, right? And Gemini is a very genial sign that typically doesn't get into disagreements, but you may find that the disagreements you do get into are a lot of like wordplay or like jumbled up words because Gemini tends to blurt things out and like say a lot without saying things. And because Mars has this shoot from the hip mentality, um, you'll go through bursts of like maybe not saying anything and then bursts of saying a bunch of stuff. And it may not be um, great for communication, <laughs> oddly enough. And it does have this like frenetic type of energy where um, you want to do something, you can't do something, and you feel sort of stuck almost because it is a mutable sign. And mutable signs can keep people, um, yes, they're able to make changes, but then 
they don't always want to make those changes. Um, they might feel kind of in between on things. This air energy, which is Gemini, um, it's an air sign, it does tend to have us changing our mind quite a bit, right? So there's this feeling of, I want to go in this direction, you know, because Mars is there, but then you realize you've gone into the wrong direction, so you're pivoting. So you can change this mutable aspect has you changing quite a bit. Unfortunately, you can go down the wrong road, or you may just be experiencing different experiences that then later on um, result in you going into a different direction, but I can almost bet you that that direction will not become clear or will not make progress until, you know, springtime, really getting into March where things kind of move on. <laughs> um, and so, yes, you may be confronting these things, but it's almost like you're not going in a, in a linear path and you keep going back and forwards over things you've already pondered and repondering them. And to the extent that that gives you more clarity, it also can feel really frenetic. It can feel like you want to do things, but you keep changing your mind. So um, again, I don't recommend like expecting to make major decisions unless there's some other aspect in your chart that requires it. It may just be a good time to study things and reflect on different things, but not put a whole bunch of pressure on yourself to um, get things done. But it's just kind of feeling that pressure of wanting to get things done because Mars is there. So that's the frenetic sort of anxiety producing energy of Gemini. You're gonna really want to take time to go take little short trips, get out, get about maybe even in nature, things like that. And that's going to help ground you and offset some of this air energy. And you're going to get a lot out of chatting with people. You're probably going to want to initiate more conversations with people. But to the extent that those conversations yield a certain result, maybe not so much. So think of it as a big experiment for humanity. Okay, and so when the planet of passion and self-assertion, Mars, transits and retrogrades back over the sign of Gemini multiple times, it becomes a six-month journey for all of humanity, and it has major ramifications. So the first pass, um, Mars is making its way over the sign of Gemini. By now, it's sort of made its way through almost it's 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 still um, it's still going um, it's still going in forward motion um, so during this time uh, from August until about when Mar when Mars starts to retrograde so until the beginning of November we're really confronting the ways in which we have ascribed beliefs and truths and failed to see the facts because Gemini is about the facts. It's about organizing, chronicling, and um, itemizing those facts um, and that truth. And so we know we have to confront the evidence before us. And even if that is a meandering sort of um, circuitous fashion um, that helps, that is really making us feel a little restless um, and perhaps, you know, not feeling like analysis paralysis in the head uh, with Jupiter being in 11th house from Mars. Um, that is going to be a situation where Jupiter, which fuels Mars um, in the sign of Aries, is going to lend this energy of wanting to really assert yourself. You know, maybe a lot of fire energy going into the air here. <laughs> Things may be said that are not necessarily diplomatic at times and are more said quickly or said 
um, oversaid, overstated. Things are being overstated at this time. It's us looking at our social constructs and our support system and weighing that and measuring that against our sovereign or independent initiatives in life. Um, do our friends and our supporters, do they support our authenticity? And if not, is that why we feel so restless? Is that why we're feeling ungrounded? You know, do your social constructs hold space for you? Or are you just constantly doing things for other people? And then during this time of global inflation and the disruption of monetary systems like cryptocurrency, we are seeing that um, folks are having to potentially make changes in their social circles, in the way in which they conduct themselves through life in a period of uncertainty. And they're really thinking, do my social circles support me and what I want to do? And there's a lot of subconscious fears we have that are, that are at odds with perhaps what we want to accomplish. Um, Mars in Gemini has this unfortunate feeling of wanting an exorbitant amount of information before we make our decisions. Um, and it really is this energy of kind of pushing really hard for the truth and pushing really hard to get things done. And in this case, because Jupiter's been in Aries for a while, it's like pushing our own agendas, our own initiatives, our own sovereign initiatives. And it's a lot of fire energy. So this can kind of come off as arguments with others. People not really not communicating very well because Mars and Gemini creates trigger or um, conversations that are uh, shooting from the hip or, sh or maybe being a little rash and abrupt with others because you just don't feel like they are valuing your opinion or your initiatives. So you kind of got to watch out for that. A better way to deal with this Mars and Gemini um, feeling is to lean into the sense of detachment and that you allow others to provide information and that you basically don't make decisions quite yet. So you don't need to get quite as riled up if you can have a, a little bit more detachment. And that may mean you spend just more time alone thinking. Because Mars is a sign that you're is a planet that likes to be alone. And um, it, there's a lot of thinking involved in Gemini. So you may need more breaks from others to assimilate. So we ask ourselves, what could we be doing differently in life when Mars transits and retrogrades and then retransits and retrogrades in a sign, we are really remaking um, our desires within this area of our life. Okay, and so we ask ourselves, how can we create more support for our truth? Um, and of course, during Virgo season, as the sun um, is in Virgo, this is going to be matched with action in the sense of organized action in Virgo planning, unification of our heart as well because Venus transited with the sun in that sense. So in a lot of ways, we were we are really in lockstep there um, by trying to create um, new daily patterns that support um, our heart and our initiatives and this kind of new way that we want to be, more authentic way that we want to be 
At the end of the six month period, I really see people feeling more authentic, really wrestling with what they believe and what they believe is their truth and coming to the con to conclusions. And it may be not until March, but it may be that you've already, here we are in the middle of September and Mar Mars is just doing its first pass through Gemini. And maybe you've already made some new uh, revelations about your truth. And now you're just coming along and thinking, how do you implement? And Mars wants to do things right away. And you may not be able to implement this right away, but it's still important that you're going through this evolution of thinking at this point. And so right now, as Mercury's in retrograde, uh, and retrograding from the sign of Libra in, eventually into Virgo. It's a time where um, we're taking our logical mind and going back into Virgo and trying to again reframe with this Mars and Gemini energy uh, what exactly we need to do daily and change our thoughts daily and our routines daily to support our sovereign initiatives. Um, and so it's like combing over your mental constructs and being like, does that really serve me? Are my relationships serving me? And is that my whole truth? Is that authentic to me? Are they authentic to me? Am I authentic to myself? And what ways in which can I um, think and act daily that will support uh, what I want to accomplish in life? And really everything starts with your thoughts. And so this is a real... Um, news flash for many people where they're like getting all this new information about the way things have been perhaps in existing relationships that didn't really work for them and so um it's like can i work with that can i change my habits and change the way i react to things and change the way i um, organize my life essentially to support who i want to be and that's what you're going to be trying to communicate. And when, and during this retrograde, as Mercury continues to be in, in Virgo um, and slides back from Libra to Virgo, that's a real feeling of maybe not necessarily being able to communicate everything that you're being, that you're realizing, but realizing quite a bit of information. And then when Mercury kind of turns around and goes in forward motion, that will be when you finally get to state your truth. So it'll be really fun and interesting with the Mars energy behind it, because it may be not just stating your truth, but it may be like using a hammer. <laughs> um, but it, it could have been this way. And I think too, when you look at the chart, um, the Jupiter being opposite Mercury when it's in Virgo is going to fuel a lot of that um, intense energy and kind of intensify those communications. So it should prove to, um, it may fuel conversations that needed to be had that hadn't um, been spoken about at that time. And they may be a little disruptive in the sense that you might have to break some eggs in order to bake a cake type of conversation. <laughs> okay, so expect this jumbled mess of communication, people stepping all over each other, trying to assert themselves, speaking too quickly, and maybe not thinking as clearly because they're um, still kind of going through the process of uh, combing through their thoughts and picking and choosing the thoughts that are most authentic and wondering if they should even like um, go down that path. So it's a very confusing time. Um, and you may see relationships get um, a little frenetic and more um, difficult 
to deal with during during this time. But that retrograde ends in um, on October 2nd when Mercury starts to go back in forward motion from Virgo back into Libra. So there is a light at the end of this Mercury retrograde. But in the meantime, what I would say is maybe spend alone time thinking before you speak, if you can. Some of the thoughts are not fully baked. Um, I have seen also just from experience so many people telling me that they're having technological problems right now in the retrograde. Um, expect that that will straighten out pretty nicely when Mercury starts to pick up speed out of Virgo because that will organize things. So there is a light at the end of this tunnel, <laughs> I promise. In conclusion, Mars and Gemini, um, it's really people struggling with their comfort zone in many ways because um, when Mars is in this this sign of Gemini, the sign of experimentation and skill building, there's a lot of missteps that happen. And it can be um, nerve wracking and it can, you can, you can feel like your nerves are actually frayed a bit from tripping over yourself, tripping over your words, not being able to clearly enunciate or clearly convey whatever it is that you feel, but you're so passionate about it. And it's so on the forefront of what you want to say. You really want to make a point because, you know, you're starting to discover what your truth is and what's authentic to you. you really can not tolerate. You're not going to be suffering fools as much in this time. People who've said things to you in the past and you've thought about it and it doesn't resonate with you, you're kind of at a moment where you're going to let them know that. And it's going to ruffle feathers. I really kind of want to call like Mars and Gemini ruffling the feathers um, because that's how this energy feels. And if you've been feeling it already, it's kind of like, you know, really, un really making a shift and a change in your life. Um, and discomfort in that. Okay, so then I think after um, you will start, you will see these issues that we are um, pl seeing play out in Mars in Gemini right now, you're going to see them resolve before um, Mars leaves Gemini in March, but that's such a long time, you know, and so it sort of behooves you to get better at communication, at the skills you're trying to acquire, even though it's uncomfortable because you will not have a way out of it. This is a, an area you have to confront in your life. I'm gonna go over which areas for you. But um, especially after Mars trying Saturn, um, it's gonna become clear the changes you need to make. Uh, so really, looking at strategies to let go of things that don't serve you as a part of becoming a more authentic person. That's going to be going on during this long six month journey. Um, so I'm going to go over next the um, effects through the houses so that you can use your rising sign to discover what area of life this is going to affect you. Okay, so Pisces Risings, your um, Mars is going to be transiting through your fourth house from your ascendant, from your rising. And um, that's a tough time emotionally because essentially Mars is trying to overcome emotional patterns um, really revisiting your past, okay? There might still be leftover resentments from the past. Um, and really, this is a time for you to think through uh, those events and find ways that you can achieve inner happiness or find out what's um, 
standing in the way of your inner happiness. Um, you are trying to assert yourself again because Jupiter is still in Aries, but you may find that, you know, either others are able to um, hurt your feelings or that you have an inner critic and that your mental thoughts are not necessarily in a good place. Now, Jupiter is in your second house, so you are feeling stable and supported monetarily and through family, but there's just these past resentments that could have happened that you haven't quite comb combed through in your mind. And this would be a good time for you to um, be more introspective, take some time out and do that introspective work um, and you know for you it's really looking at how your social circles affect your inner happiness and um, with the Saturn transiting your 12th house um, it really is about you uh, shaping patterns that affect your chronic health. So you may still be experiencing chronic health or mental health problems at this point. And Mars transiting your fourth house gives you an opportunity to kind of think through uh, the things that you've done in the past and your emotional state and how that's contributing to your mental health. So this is kind of a mental health uh, transit for you over the next six months and really Mars puts the emphasis on your own inner world and being more authentic with your emotions so this is this is going to be a difficult transit for you but know that time spent with your own emotions will yield better results during this period okay so thank you for joining me for Mars in Gemini through the signs. As a reminder, I just want to say that this transit will continue until October. So if you haven't had enough of Mars transiting your house um, of Gemini, um, just buckle up, buttercup because this is a strange energy. Um, it is going to ultimately make you more authentic. And, you know, in a world where we really rarely see truth or people standing up for truth, this is reshaping our ability to communicate our truth to people, to understand our truth, to work through it mentally, even though it's uncomfortable. So hang in there and thank you for joining me at Celestial U. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and share with your friends, especially if you know that they might be going through a difficult transit. Let's face it, this is going on for a very long time and um, it could be quite challenging. If you want a personal reading, um, you can find me at www.thecelestialu.com and I'd be happy to help you work through um, your personal issues regarding this transit. So thank you very much everybody and take care. Bye!